Masechet Besa, Daf Lamed Bet, 32, or at the Mishnah, a few lines down, that says, En pochatin etaner mipene shehu ose keli. We're going to see today a whole bunch of things about Yom Tov regarding um, building and metaken mana, creating a vessel, which is not allowed on Yom Tov. And so the first example is if we want to make a lamp, you take a piece of clay and you would hollow out the middle, like in this picture here. We're talking about a little, a little lamp like this. This is a fancy one. The one down here is a very simple one. And so if a person wants to make a lamp on Yom Tov, uh, that is a problem. You're not allowed to, to do that. And this is even if you don't uh, bake it, right? Generally, you have to for, first form it and then you bake it. Even making it a form is not allowed because you are making a keli. The Gemara will discuss. You know, it's not quite finished making a kli until it's actually uh, um, uh, baked. Um, and nevertheless, even if you can't use it for um, for burning oil, maybe you could use it for something else. Okay. Also, to make charcoal, you take wood and burn it, and then and then uh, put out put it out to make this charcoal that would be uh, very easy to burn. It's good use being good for a hot fire. That's also you're creating a vessel. And creating something useful there that you didn't have before. Uh, and you're also not allowed to take a wick and cut into two because you're also then creating or fixing a vessel then because now you, before you had one and now you have two. So creation is good for Prashid Brashit, but we don't create on Shabbat or Yom Tov and therefore all these are acts of creating. The Biudah has a loophole. You can cut it with, not with a knife, but with a fire. You just burn, the, burn, uh, put fire in the middle of the uh, wick, and then the, the fire will cut it into two. That's a roundabout way to do it, and that way is permitted. All right, now the Gemara is going to discuss. Mantana de Fetichat Ner Manahu. Who is the author of our Mishnah that said that just hollowing out a lamp, and that's already considered a vessel, even if you don't bake it, so now we're going to relate two halachot. One is about creating a vessel on Shabbat Yom Tov, and the other one is about mikabel uh, tumah. Something cannot even receive tumah. It's not susceptible to receiving tumah until it's considered a vessel. Raw material does not, even if uh, tameh touches it, uh, does not become tameh. So here we're discussing... A, a, a clay vessel, uh, when does it start to receive, be susceptible to receiving Tumah? Well, only when you completed its formation. And that means making it a form, even before you uh, cook it. Because you see the Yoshua says, no, only when it's fired in the furnace, when it's baked, only then. So the is, well, it requires more work in order to make it a kili. And uh, the Bimeir does not. So you see that the Bimeir fits with uh, this, uh, to be the author of our Mishnah, where, who, which also says even just forming the clay uh, is considered making a vessel and prohibited on Yom Tov. All right, so now we have an author, hold on, can you really compare these two sources? Maybe to be made only said over here in this case, uh, where you're making a bowl or something, something you could put things in, you could put food in it. And so then, even if you didn't fire it up, it's still a vessel. But in our case, when you're making this, this tiny little oil lamp, if you can't use it for fire. Uh, you can't put oil in it or liquids in it while it's still, uh, b before it's baked. And it's too small to put any food in it or anything. So really, what is it useful for? And so maybe to be made, it would say, yes, in the case of making a kali, a vessel, a bigger vessel, it is mikabel tuma, but maybe not in the case of an oil lamp. And so we answer, even the small oil lamp that's not baked, you can still put some little coins in it. So you can use it as a little piggy bank. And so therefore, since it's useful for something, it is mikabel tuma, and you're not allowed to make it on Yom Tov. All right, that's all one version of a discussion of who the author of the Mishnah is. Now we're going to have a second one, a different author. We have a Mishnah that teaches uh, regarding these il pasin haraniyot. What are these? There's two opinions. So, uh, il pas usually is a pot. 
So Tosafot said this is a pot where you first make it with the uh, with the lid attached to it as one piece of clay, all enclosed. And then at some point, you uh, break off the top. This is a good idea because if you make them separately, then often the top doesn't fit the bottom because they're made separately. So if you make them together and then cut it out after, that's uh, okay. All right, Rashi, I'm going to go with Rashi's simpler explanation. He says that this is talking about a flat, uh, talking about a plate, a flat plate. The process of making a plate is you take the dough, first you make a flat disc. That's what this is talking about. Afterwards, second step, you make an indentation so that it can hold uh, soup or food. And then afterwards, you fire it up. So this is a very, very basic flat plate. And so the, this Tanakh Kama says, you can put that, if it's in a tent together with a corpse, it's, it's, it's tahor, because it only receives corpse impurity if it has a, an opening that can contain something. It is a flat disc. Um, but here's the more important, utmeot b'masa hazav, if a zav uh, moves it, then it becomes tameh. So you see that it is susceptible to tumah, according to Tanakama, even though it's a flat disk. Now, the be amar be ali aizer, be rabbi sadok, omer, af tehorot b'masa hazav, lefi shelo nigmera melachtan. Rabbi ali aizer says that it's tahor from masa hazav, because you didn't form it yet. Right. If only when once you form it, then it becomes a keli. According to the Bielazar Bibisadok, when it's flat, uh, just totally flat, then it's tahor because it's not a keli yet. But when you form it, then it be, then it can re receive tumah. Um, that's the implication of, of what he says here. And so he would he could be the author of our Mishnah because our Mishnah would also says that once you form it, it um, it uh, is considered a vessel and therefore is not permitted to do on Yom Tov. The truth is, Tanakama would agree with the law. He says even, even, even beforehand, when it's flat, it's also considered a vessel. Um, but Abelias is the one that fits this perfectly. Now, Amale Abaye, Dilma ad kan la kama rabi eli aizer bidibi sadokatam ela de chaze le kabule be midi avala chale mai chaze. Hold on, the same question as we had before. Maybe the eli aizer would only say at this plate flat, and then you form it, then it is mekabel tumah, only because it can hold something. But in our case, it's very small. So what can it hold? Same answer as before, mekabole pepishite, that it can fit small coins. And uh, there we go. We have uh, two options for the author for Amish, of our Mishnah. All right, now, but I tell has some other cases. Tenur banan en pochatina tener, ben osin il pasin haraniyot beyom tov. So according to Tanakh Kama, uh, they uh, the said, agree that you cannot make form a, a lamp, but and they also say you can't even make this flat plate on Yom Tov. Uh, even that would be a vessel. However, the Ban Shabbat Gamliel Matir Bil Pasin Chadaniot Rashbag says it's okay. It's a flat thing. It's not a vessel. Now, what does this word mean? Chadaniot. We've been referring to a lot of times. My Chadaniot Amar Yuda Iraniot. My Iraniot. Okay, we Rav Yudas says, I don't know, but we don't know what that word means either. And we finally explain. It's talking about a villager's bowl. The people in the village, in the village, they're simple people. And so once they uh, make a flat, a flat, flat piece of clay, they're like, okay, a plate. That's it. We could put pizza on it. We don't need anything fancy. The people in the city, they want to make it shape. They have to bake it. And so that's what's called a villager's plate. All right, excellent. And now the next part of the Mishnah says, the end of scene. Pechamin, one may not produce charcoal. We say peshita. Of course, you can't make charcoal. Uh, what what use does it have? The my haze. Uh, see, charcoal is usually used for by smiths. It makes a very hot fire. It's not for cooking. So why would you why would you think that it even might be allowed to make charcoal? You're making a a vessel. Taner bichia lo nisrachel el mosran leol riarin lebo bayom. Oh, you might have thought that it would be permitted to give to the bathhouse attendant. Uh, who would heat up the bathhouse using this charcoal? Um, it, he wants to make the water very hot, and so they they would use it. And so this is teaching. No, you might think it's allowed, and it's not allowed to give it to the bathhouse. Now, even that ubobayomi shareh. Why would even even think that that's allowed? You see that you can't give it to the bath. That you can't um, on on yom tov. You're allowed to heat up water to wash your hands and face and feet because that's something that people did every day. However, in those days, they didn't wash their whole bodies every day. They didn't go to the bath. They went to the bathhouse once a week. So therefore, that was not considered Shabbat And so um, one was not allowed to 
heat up water to wash one's whole body. Um, the question nowadays is, uh, do things change? Nowadays, most people do wash every day. So now does it become Shaveh Luchol Nefesh? Does this law change or not? That's a big discussion um, by Puskim now. But back then, it wasn't allowed. And furthermore, you couldn't do it in the bathhouse even if the water was heated up beforehand because we were afraid that if they, the, the, bath, the bathhouse attendants would uh, lie and say that they, it was heated up from before, but really they heated up on that day for something that's not Shaveh Luchol Nefesh, so that's not allowed. So why would we even think that you can make charcoal and give it to the bathhouse attendant? And the answer is, Oh, maybe the bathhouse attendants are not going to use it for washing, but rather for sweating. They would make a, um, a sauna. And uh, making a sauna, they believed, is very healthy to sit in the, in the, to, in the, sit in the hot, in hot room and sweat. People do it today also. And therefore, that is Davar Shaveh Lechol Nefesh, which is interesting because it means not that everybody was doing it, but even if not, mo even most people don't do it, but some people do it, and it's considered something that's good for everyone, would they do it because it's healthy? Um, that makes it Shaveh Lechol Nefesh. And so therefore, and this was a time before the Gezara that said, don't go to the bathhouse at all because we don't trust them. And so, um, uh, and therefore, that's why we thought it might be allowed at that time for that use, to use the charcoal. And so he comes and teaches, no, you're not allowed to make the charcoal because that's not, it's still making a vessel and not sufficient use. All right, next part of the Mishnah. Can cut a wick into two. So the Buddha says, you're allowed to cut it with fire. Well, what's the difference? Why, you can't cut it with, um, with a, a knife because you are make, making a vessel. Well, if you're cutting it with fire, you're also creating a vessel. Oh, here's what of you that said you can do. You can take one long wick, put two ends into two lamps that are near each other, and then you light a fire in the middle. And so now it just looks like you're lighting the fire. You're lighting both of them. It turns out that it will break them into two and uh, then get smaller, and you created two wicks out of one. But that's a permitted way because you're not doing it um, only to cut it into two, all right? It, you're doing it primarily just to light them on fire, so that's okay. Amar Rav Natan Bar Aba Amar Rav Mohatin Etapetila Biyom Tov. So he says that one is allowed to, well, we don't know what Mohatin means. So we ask, my Mohatin, Amar Rav Hanina Bar Shelem Yamish Medrav La Aduye Hushcha. It means to remove the dark part at the edge a burnt part, charcoal section of the uh, wick, you can, so that it will shine more brightly. You are allowed to do that on Yom Tov. You're prepared, you're, you're improving the fire. That's okay. And there are six laws regarding the wicks. Three of them are stringent and three are lenient and they are parallel to each other. So the three are parallel to each other. The first thing that you can't do is to twist, uh, braid the wick um, at, 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 to start with on Yom Tov. However, the thing that you can do is to uh, crush it, to kind of uh, um, to uh, adjust it um, with your fingers. So not a full twisting, but adjusting is okay. The thing that you can't do is to singe it in fire um, to, so that it will light better. That's not allowed, but you can uh, soak it in oil and that will also help, them light, help it light better and that's permitted. Um, one cannot cut it into two with a knife but one can cut it into two um, uh, with a fire when the two edges ends are in two lamps. All right, good. So now we have all these uh, uh, these laws that are allowed and not allowed. And since we quoted already something in the name of Rav Natan, but Abba in the name of Rav, now we have a little agada also in his in the name of the same sage. Rav Natan, but Abba Amar Rav Ati Rebavel Nam Hem. Oh. Uh, okay, a serious charge. He says uh, the rich people of Bavel are going to go the, to the down the land down under. Why? There was one man. Uh, his name um, was Natan, 
Shabtai Bar Barinos. And one time he went to Bavel and he wanted to make a business deal there, uh, you know, get uh, to get some capital, raise some capital there, book the profits, and they did not agree. Okay, well, that's that by itself. Maybe it was just a bad business deal. But here's furthermore, Mizoneh Mezan, Named Lazainuhu. They also they didn't even help him out. They didn't offer him food. Right? He's a poor, poor guy, and he's coming as a guest. He's trying to do some business, he's trying his best, and they didn't take care of him at all. So you see that the uh, wealthy people in Bavel were stingy, didn't take care of the poor, and therefore um, they uh, deserve to go to Gehinam. All right, he said also, Amar, Aneh Rav Katu. Not only that, but um, these people like people like them uh, who are so stingy, they must not be from the Jewish nation, from the Israelite nation. They must be from the other nations who joined in with Bnei Israel when they left Egypt, called the Arev Rav, the mixed multitude. And how do we know that they are not Israelite? Tichtiv Natan Nechada Chamim Berichem Chan Devarim says Hashem will give us, will show us compassion and make us compassionate. I mean, in Peshat, just like uh, just two synonyms. Uh, we are reading it as not only will Hashem show us mercy, but we will be merciful. Hashem will make us merciful. So therefore, we see anyone, anyone who is merciful to others. And you know that that person is from uh, the, a, a descendant of Abraham. Of Abraham. Someone who is not merciful, then it's impossible he cannot be a descendant of Abraham. And therefore, those uh, rich uh, people in Babel who don't help the poor um, cannot be from the Israelite people. Same sage says another thing. Someone who's dependent on others for sustenance. They have to go to someone else's table. They have to go and beg, and they don't have their own. This uh, the world is dark for them. As the pasuk says in Yav, where is it? He knows the day of darkness is already at hand. If he, had, if he has to look for where is his bread, he wanders around for bread and doesn't know where his bread is coming from. Then uh, that's uh, that's uh, not no fun. Rab Nachman Amar Af Hayav Enam Hayim. Not only is it a life of darkness; it's not even a life at all. There's no satisfaction of life when uh, someone has to worry uh, all the time about the next meal that the, that they're going to get. And so that's really an insightful uh, psychological understanding of poverty. Now on the topic of whose life is not a, not a satisfying life, here's another three people. That's the one we just had. And also someone whose wife rules over him. Thankfully, I don't have this problem. My wife does everything that I say. I'm just don't please tell her that I said this. Um, and also someone who is ruled by suffering, uh, who's, uh, who has uh, ailments all the time. Um, they can never relax, and so their life is not a satisfying life. Also, some say uh, someone who has only one shirt um, is, uh, is, uh, has a difficult life because he can't change it. He finds you know, lice on his shirt, and he doesn't have another shirt to change into. So he has to just keep it that way. So that's not a way to live. The Tanakama, if Shadimayan Bamane, now the Tanakama only listed three, didn't list someone who has one shirt. So how come he didn't list it? And so he says, because all right, someone he'll, he'll check his his uh, his garment and he'll see he has some lice on it, he'll take them off, and then he'll go ahead and keep wearing it. So it's not so bad to have only one shirt. Um uh, it's uh, b- better than having a bossy wife anyway. Okay. Um, so in this case, you want to have uh, people today make fish on a, on a, a, a parchment paper. So if you want to, you want to, you want to cook the fish on a piece of earthenware or some paper. You're not allowed to break uh, the earthenware on Yom Tov because you're actually making a vessel, uh, uh, making a vessel. Uh, it, even though it's kind of counterintuitive, you're breaking a vessel, but you're breaking it in order to get a certain size that you want so that it can uh, go in the oven and uh, keep it from the, keep the bottom from burning, you're making a little tray, uh, or to cut the paper to that size um, to, cook a, to cook a roasted, a salted fish. So all these are allowed making a vessel. When when uh, you cannot sweep out the oven or stove 
um, you make a fire in there and then you usually sweep it out once it's hot and take the dough and put it on the side of the oven. And so um, this just should be done before if you're sweeping it out on Yom Tov, you're, you're creating a vessel. Um, but you can press it down just to make room. You press everything, the dust and ashes down, and that's okay. Ben makifin shete chaviot ishpot alehen et kedera. You can also, also another thing you cannot do uh, because it's building or making a tent is that to take two barrels and then you make a fire between the barrels and you put a pot on top of them, a little makeshift stove. So that would be building or or um, a tent. Ve'en somchin et kederot be'bekaat echen badelet. And similarly, you cannot prop up a pot with a piece of wood or with a door. Uh, so here also is a similar idea. You're put, putting fire underneath and you prop up the pot with something. And uh, that also is creating a tent. And one cannot um, uh, lead an animal with a stick uh, on Yom Tov. Maybe there's a problem of using a stick for a purpose that it wasn't uh, intended for, but Rabbi al says that that is okay. All right, so now back to the first case. My Tama, what is the reason? That by uh, break a tearing or make uh, or or uh, make breaking the clay, you are creating, preparing a vessel, and that's no good. Ben Glafin Tanu Vichirayim Taner Av Chia Bar Yosef Kamed Rav Nachman. Im Yiv Shalefot Ela Im Ken Gorfo Mutar. Okay, so we said that you can't clean out. The, the, the oven, because then you're preparing it for use, metaken mana, but it is Yom Tov, and you do want to be able to, to cook. So here's a leniency. If there's no other way to cook, to bake in that oven, unless you sweep it out, it's because there's so much stuff in it, and it's permitted. Uh, so, you know, try not to, but it's permitted then if you need to. Here's a story about one case, the wife of Rabbi Chia, uh, one time a brick fell into her oven from the side of the one of the walls, a brick fell down. And now it's not going to bake so well. So Rabbi tells his wife, listen, I want good quality bread. I don't want it, the one, the piece that touched that, that touched that brick and got burned and all that. So therefore, he's, what he's hinting to is you're, you're allowed to remove the brick, remove the debris so that the food will Cook well, so this is a story that supports the uh, halacha that we just mentioned. Avah similarly told his attendant, "I want to roast the duck in the oven and make sure make sure not to singe it." And usually, it gets singed because it touches part of the touches some of those ashes, and so therefore he's saying, you know, do a good job, and you're allowed to remove uh, the uh, the ashes that are inside. So Ravina comes to Rav Ashe and he asks him a challenge. He says, we heard from Rav Mehusar, from Utsal, that the master, meaning you, Rav Ashe, that you um, plaster in the mouth of an oven for him on a Yom Tov. In other words, they put something in the oven and then there's a hole and all the heat is escaping. So they make um, some plaster, they you know, uh, knead together some uh, uh, earth and, and water, and they cover up the hole so it'll be nice and hot inside. And you said that this is allowed, but aren't you kneading on, on the holiday? And that's not allowed. Uh, I mean, you're not allowed to knead dough because you're going to eat it, but this is just kneading uh, to make a, make a, 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 to plug up a hole. Amale anan arakta defrat samchinan says, no, no, we don't need it. We go to the, to the bank of the Euphrates, and there's mud there already. So we just take that mud, it's already kneaded, and we just use that. And even that, you have to, if you're going to use uh, some mud from the side of the riverbank, you have to go from the day before and uh, mark it off. So I'm going to use this and put it aside so that it's not mukse. And uh, that's regarding mud. Ravina adds that if you want to use ashes and just put the ashes together and and uh, and cover up the the hole, that's permitted because ashes don't really turn into a mud, so it's not considered kneading. All right. And now the last halachav and makifin shetechaviyot. You can't take two barrels and put a pot on top of it. But now we have a similar case with the opposite ruling that if someone needs to relieve themselves on Yom Tov, you're allowed to make this kind of makeshift uh, toilet. 
uh, you take two stones uh, with some space in between and you sit on the stones and then you take care of your needs. So, and that's permitted. So how come you're allowed to put these two stones as a toilet, but you can't put two stones and put a pot on top of it to bake? Um, this is not allowed. Why do you say this is allowed? How come the, the, the bathroom is allowed and the makeshift stove is not allowed? Oh, it's different when you put a pot on top, you're making a tent. See, so it's not just a problem. It's not, it's not a problem of building, but rather you're making a tent. You put two things and something on top. Now you have a something, an overhang that's covering an area underneath. Whereas when you're making a toilet, it's not a problem. You just put two stones. There's nothing on top. You sit on top. But there's no uh, there's no cover, and so that is okay. Hold on, as uh, asks. Let's say I will make a bench, as it's a solid bench, so it has no empty space under underneath, but just a, a block. And so you're going to tell me that that's allowed because it's not a problem of building and it's not a tent because nothing underneath. So you're going to tell me that that's okay. Okay, that is a permanent thing. So if I'm making a permanent piece of furniture, then it's not allowed. That's called building. But these cases are temporary. It's just two, two rocks. So So therefore, really both should be allowed. However, but in most cases, the rabbis came and said, don't even make a temporary structure because then you may come to build a permanent structure. And that's why the temporary stove is no good. However, in this case of the toilet, because of kibbot habiriyot, people, they have to relieve themselves and do so with dignity. So therefore, the rabbis did not uh, apply their gezera when it's going to interfere with human dignity. And therefore, um, they said, even though in general, it's a problem of building, even building a temporary structure is no good because you may come to build a permanent structure. Nevertheless, when it comes to creating a makeshift toilet that is permitted so that people can uh, uh, can live with dignity. Amen.